Okay, that's the pathway. Now, it's very clear that kisspeptin is involved in the activation of puberty, the transition from prepubertal to postpubertal stages of life. It's also involved in any of the sort of downstream effects of having elevated LH and FSH, including elevated vitality, which includes both energy and in some cases, libido. So there's naturally occurring kisspeptin and there's now synthetically generated kisspeptin designed to mimic naturally occurring kisspeptin. And it's actually prescribed for what's called hypothalamic amenorrhea. Hypothalamic amenorrhea is the loss or the absence of periods of menstrual cycles that are the consequence of deficits within the hypothalamus itself. So not something within the ovary or a lack of the pituitary to make LH or FSH, but a deficit of the hypothalamus to promote LH and FSH and the downstream hormones, testosterone and estrogen. Incidentally, there are also kisspeptin antagonists, okay, drugs that are designed to suppress kisspeptin, and those are used to treat some of the symptoms of menopause, including night sweats and some of the what are called vasomotor symptoms. So kisspeptin is obviously a key player in this whole pathway of steroid hormone release, the steroid hormones being testosterone and estrogen. There are other steroid hormones as well, of course. Now, there are folks within the landscape of peptide therapeutics, folks meaning physicians and other practitioners who said, ah, oh, well, here's a, a peptide that is known to promote all these hormone pathways that are associated with vitality, libido, et cetera. And so there are people who take kits, peptin peptides as a way to stimulate these pathways. And they're doing so for the specific purpose of increasing vitality, as it relates to libido and mood and to get the downstream increases on testosterone and estrogen. And of course, some people are taking kisspeptin peptides to treat hypothalamic amenorrhea. And as I mentioned, some people are taking kisspeptin antagonists. They're trying to block the kisspeptin pathway in order to reduce some of the vasomotor and other symptoms of menopause. I will say, despite the fact that the kisspeptin pathway is well known, and despite the fact that the kisspeptin peptide is designed to mimic a naturally occurring peptide that has a pretty constrained set of functions, in the hypothalamic pituitary system and their downstream effects on the gonads. The use of kisspeptin to increase vitality and libido is a bit of a, um, let's just say, it's a, it's a little bit of a wild card. We don't yet know all the effects of kisspeptin. Again, it was fairly recently discovered. We have it in mind that it's involved in these pathways, but I should say every time we look at a given peptide, whether or not it's ghrelin or hypocretinorexin or it's GLP-1, what we find is that Again, there are these pleiotropic effects. There is rarely, if ever, one specific effect. And it's not just a concern about side effects that we wanna take these pleiotropic effects into consideration. 